Hey there, hello. everyone. Oh, hello. Hey, guys. Hey, What's it's up? You. Hello. It's you. And you oh, were there. You were there. And you were there. <laughs> Bob and I are in the studio. No, you're not a uh, liar. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wait. And right. Apparently, snow. Bob that... needs to shower because he's got dandruff. What's happening? <laughs> They're outside in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> I thought those were um, uh, what? Uh, new those, the wrong, new, oh, shirt. those are neutrinos bombarding Steven. It's, yeah, it was supposed to be actually lights. Be a lot worse than that. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Slightly lights. <laughs> was, was Jordy LaForge able to see neutrinos? He probably was. Yes. Right? So how did that not like turn into 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 a cloud that you couldn't see beyond if you were to look at neutrinos? Yeah, he just he just ignores the you know anything that he doesn't want to focus in on. Apparently, oh. uh, it's so funny. You could set the high pass and the low pass. You can set filters so that it you know it only registers if it's above a certain level. So the background you could basically oh. dial out the background. So I see. So source right there, but the background. So if there were an there. artificial source of neutrinos generating yes. something that you'd be able to pick up. That is and the, on the one episode that I remember where he was where they were showing his vision of neutrinos. There was an intense so localized source of neutrinos that he was visualizing. Yeah, that's what I get for not reading the manual on his visor. Yeah. So if I had read that. And this, <laughs> and this is the second nerdiest conversation I've had this week. <laughs> right <laughs> right off the bat, too. All right. Oh, so one of my blogs breaks out into this conversation debate, really, mm -hmm. about the whole the fact that Scotty would give Kirk one estimate for how long it takes to fix something, and then he would do it in half the time. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, yeah. We know. You under was... you under uh, you, you you tell them you're going to do less, and you you do better and do more. Right. That's why he's a miracle worker. Well, it's an like under promise and overperform. Is that what they say? Over well, the, the point, the, so some people were questioning the legitimacy of that, like, like or, saying or the ethic, that, or the ethics of it, frankly. Like you, well, from one perspective, like if it, if his initial estimate were accurate, you can't just like bend the laws of physics and, you know, do right. it in half the time. I cannot change the laws of physics, Captain. <laughs> so, the. <laughs> My perspective was this, like, there's, so there's basically two things going on here. One, and it is, you know, when one episode kind of tongue in cheek, Scotty did say to somebody, or this might've been in one of the movies. No, it, was, I, it was the movie Relics next gen episode. Oh Relics, yeah. You always, the Dyson you, Sphere. you double the estimate so that you could then look like a hero when you say you can get it done. He specifically time. says that to Jordy. Yeah. Which is kind of an inside joke, you know, but right. Right. Yeah. But, it, but it, of course, you would think that Kirk would catch on to that eventually. But the other thing is that it's not as if um, like a repair is one unmutable thing, right? Like you could imagine that repairing something could exist along a spectrum from you have all the time in the world. So we're going to tweak the hell out of it and make those engines hum to, oh, my God, we need some more power in, you know, two hours where we're all dead, you know? <laughs> yep. 
bypass this and you forget about that and you turn off the safety yeah, protocols. Yeah. Yeah. Make it riskier and quicker. Yeah, and exactly. No testing. We're not, we're not going to have time to test this. Yeah, just get it working. That's what Russia did in with their. Um, oh gosh, what was the, I, it's skipping my my head now. What was the name of their program during uh, parallel to the Apollo mission? But they basically skipped a bunch of things in yeah. order. To, like <laughs> uh, we got to make up for time here, and that's why they were unable. Yeah, it blew up in their face. Yeah, yeah it, it literally did. <laughs> so you pay the price, but not in Star Trek. Otherwise, but that wouldn't is have, wouldn't have a show. That is a one movie cliche that I think is overused, where some source, sometimes apparently authoritative, like Spock or C-3PO, Reddit, whatever, gives an estimate of the odds of something happening successfully that's ridiculously low, but it always works out. Hmm. Right? It's like, that. that no, that should... That either you were wrong, your odds estimate had to be completely wrong, or, yeah. you know, or there is some kind of... Uh, improbability drive at work or something. Or they lie, <laughs> outright lie. It's called Liars. a script. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. I know, it's but plot it's, it's supposed it's to be get a plot armor. <laughs> it's supposed to play like reality, right? And, you know, I think it's legitimate that an engineer would give a guesstimate on what, you know, what is Scotty, how, how well could he forecast how long it would take him to do things that he's probably never done before? Yeah, right. I think the implication is he he knows exactly what he's doing. He and it's a very good act, good estimate. You know, he knows what what is necessary. I, w I wouldn't assume he's never done it before. It's funny though if you listen to Jordy give his estimates in Next Gen. Jordy's like he gets very oddly specific. Like I can do this. Eh, it's going to be about thirteen minutes. I mean, he he really you know makes his predictions well, it's, it's, weirdly. It's, it's starfleet, and you would think like. All right, I need, I know that I need to swap out this gizmo, and I timed myself. I know I could swap out that gizmo in 13 minutes, right? That's that's not yeah, unrealistic. I would think Data would be do that more than Jordy. Sure. Oh, oh, Data would have it down to the picosecond. But what kills me about Jordy is that uh, too many times he's he's got to solve something. He's got to he's got to make some change, some engineering change, mm -hmm. some configuration yeah. change to some technology, and it's. It, you get the impression that it's never been done before yeah. and mm -hmm. he and he pulls it out in like 12 seconds it's just like wait a second dude that would that sounds like a project that would take a month yeah and you just knocked that out no one's ever done it before you just did it in under a minute like dude come on right but you know but well the other thing to be said was slow, you, you right? could yeah you could describe both of them as geniuses right i mean in order to be the the, the head engineer on something that's worth you know, an unfathomable amount of money. They've got to be geniuses in what they do. So maybe Steve's right. Maybe their estimates are very quick and, you know, and have a lot of... No, I think that, that's them. plausible. What's implausible is, is how little they use AI in their estimates. So... Yeah, that's... Like, yeah, absolutely. I would I'd love to see the situation like that where they do, like, an AI runs a simulation of three million possible things and said, this is the one that will work. It's like, oh, okay, we'll do this. And one. especially in the age where quantum yeah. computer, computing will be... Is, yeah, will we're talking be the only hundreds computer. of years in the future. Yeah, I know. Right? So, I mean, it's unrealistic that there aren't AIs all over the place, but at least whatever. You could always say that they just decided not to make self-aware robots or whatever and start in the Star Trek yeah. universe. And but still you would have like AI simulators like that ship would be so AI'd to death. Mm -hmm. um, but not only that, um, external technological support. Yes. They beam down with may phasers and maybe a tricorder. And oh, that's it's, it's ridiculous. It, it's so nineteen sixties. It, 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 yeah. it pisses me off that, that they, <laughs> I mean, you know, you got a budget and it's it's but it's the, the support that they would have, or you know, they, they beam people into a, a dangerous situation. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. you should send a send a robot, send a drone with I a know, but camera Bob, to, Bob, to the problem it is out. This. There's lots of problems with no how show. Star Trek built their <laughs> universe from a storytelling perspective, right? As, as a writer of Star Trek, we've talked about this before, but it is a it's a pretty cool point. Like, there are problems that they could solve in so many ways, mm -hmm. but it's always up to humans to do it. It has mm -hmm. to be, or else the story sucks. You know, so it can't be realistic in any way. And the mm -hmm. more technologically advanced we get, the more hokey Star Trek looks because you, you're just sitting there going, "It's aging poorly." You have 
You it's like the analog go... dials on the original Enterprise, yeah. you know, right? Yeah, the <laughs> or the time or the time <laughs> wheel, that, you know, that roll. You could have someone go into the holodeck and practice doing the fix. You know, like um, like in Apollo thirteen, where they had the astronaut, yeah. the guy, which I forgot his name, but he was the one that they thought was sick, and he's practicing figuring out how to fix a problem, and then they execute it. Well, you could have yeah. the, you could have the computer do that. Execute mm -hmm. using mm -hmm. the the, uh, the hollow deck as like a physical replication of the ship, right? But you can't do that because it's shit storytelling. Nobody cares about what the robots are doing. The thing is, but it's also lazy. You're right, but it's lazy writing. And but this is just the evolution of science fiction, right? As science fiction gets more sophisticated, then um, Ian, I just want to check one thing. That timestamp. The, to me, it looks like in front of my face, but that's not what everybody else is seeing. No, right? I'm not seeing any time. No, you don't. Yeah, sure. no. Nope. Um, I'll stop that. So, so like, <laughs> more, like, mature, you know, good quality science fiction writing that is sort of, you know, standing on the shoulders of all the older, you know, less thoughtful science fiction writing. You need to spend a lot of time thinking about the technology <laughs> that exists in your world, right? This is the world building part of writing science fiction. What technology exists? How do people use it? Mm. And how do you have stories and drama taking place within that technology, right? Yeah. Where if the technology can't solve every problem or replace everything that people do, because that's, unless that's your story, right? But unless, cause that's, cause that's boring. Um, and you, you can't write yourself into a corner. So Star Trek makes this problem all the time. They under massively underuse technology and then they, overuse it and write themselves into a corner it's like oh we could transport in between planets now then why why do we have ships again why are yeah. why are there yep. ships uh it, it, so yeah no. yeah rather than thinking all right, right you know there's there's got to be reasons why they're doing things the way they're doing they're doing them or what technology would they have how do we make it interesting and dangerous and dramatic even with this technology and union so, rules or, but yeah, or just it's finicky or there's lots of situations that it's easy to, you know, like the other people have technology, too, and they, they use their technology to shut down your technology. Now we're back to, you know, yeah, uh, more conventional situation yeah. or whatever. You just have to be you have to thoughtfully create the situations that you want to create w without, you know, the, the, you know, otherwise the, 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 te the relationship with technology takes you out of the story or it just gets way out of hand. Yeah, right. You lose control. Yeah, they already blew it. Yeah, I, I mean, Star well, Trek is a very bad job. Well, I have to give Star Trek a massive get out of jail free card because, <laughs> because the thing uh, is, it is, it is a futuristic kind of utopian <laughs> vision of humanity, right? It's we were like we got our we almost destroyed ourselves in World War Three, and then we got our shit together and we formed the Federation, and like we really, we you know, we make life better for everybody through technology and you know interstellar liberal democracy basically uh, and so that's kind so you can't do that and then totally blow it on the implementation of technology yeah and they and they yeah. just triple down on it instead of like yeah. instead of taking the original star trek and being like all right, all right reboot this let's yeah. let's make it even more difficult and dangerous to raise the stakes yeah. they just make their their technology so tricked out that's why i hated on um, uh, Discovery. When they went into the far future. Yeah, yeah, with the ship that, you know, could be anywhere at any time. It's like, uh, you know. Sport drive. Yeah, like it just, you can't make things too easy, you know. Yeah. No, I well, agree. They need to be thinking of ways to dial back the technology. Like, yeah. how can we make a reason why the technology would not, would not be so overwhelming, but have it make sense? So I think the, 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 uh, the work that does that the best is dune mm. right because you no have ai the, no ai no right. computers yeah i know no computers. Computers. so when well, you take computers except, out of the equation except you're on, left what was with. that planet x they had yes computers on that planet they were the shit man. they were they were pushing the limits but even they, they didn't they really they weren't supposed to you know they, <laughs> like and, abacus we should see comments shouldn't we uh, like yeah, we're not. Bob and I aren't seeing comments. Well, uh, you don't see it on the the big um, screen. We're not seeing it on the big screen. No. Oh. Huh. Yeah, they're they're just talking shit about the two of you guys. That's basically oh. it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> hold on. We're used about to a time it. stamp and yeah, there that comment is. Oh, there's comments about my yeah. uh, augmentation. Here. There it is. Somebody said many machines. Many machines many on machines X. X. Yeah, on yeah. I know, right? How cool is that? They were they were pushing the limits. They were they were so they didn't have computers. 
but what they had was just like me mechanical machines that could get better at doing what they were doing that they could learn like a like a, wow. a training bot that would that would get better and and that was controversial sort of it's like learning. wait wait that's you can't have any learning you can't have any train even if it's mechanical and it's not you know like a digital computer um they were so paranoid about even taking a baby step in the direction of any machine that could you know mimic the mind of man i'd be yeah. happy if, if 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 star trek just had some robots in the distance you mm -hmm. see robots doing stuff like th there was the episode where they had the exocomp which was basically a a remote drone that had it had some 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 fairly sophisticated AI, but it was able to use a replicator. It had an onboard replicator that can fashion any tool that it needed to, to do a job. And it was kicking ass. It was doing repairs faster and quicker than any than any group of, yeah. of humans were doing it. And then of course the exocomps got they evolved and they became sapient and self-aware. And then that's it. We never basically never see them again. Um, but having those remote tools just seems so obvious. I mean, at least show them, you know every now and then or and i'd love to see some bipedal robots just walking around not data level but just come on just throw them in there i know it's probably going to add too much to the budget for the episodes but it's just so frustrating i uh, uh, and you know i still love star trek but maybe just show more of that in, yeah. in other in other science fiction that, well but in general has, if you zoom out enough. a little bit and you comment about writing and storytelling you know there if if done well all you need is two people sitting in a room and you could entertain the hell out of people if the, if the script is good and the conversation yeah. is good. Writing Every, is always king, yeah. Everything else is set dressing, right? Because we want to hear compelling stories about human beings. Yeah. Game of Thrones was great. I didn't care. I mean, I liked the medieval setting. It was cool, but it didn't matter because we were all fascinated with the characters, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what right. all good writing comes down to. So, I, Bob, I don't disagree with you. Like, we want the setting that they pick to be legit and we want it to feel right. We don't want it, the movie or the show to take us out when we're, when you're questioning it, when you're thinking outside of what's happening in the show, because they do something stupid or silly to me, that's the death of storytelling. If that happens to me a few times in the show, I don't want to watch it. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's just, but partly it's a matter of internal consistency. Like you're telling me this is 200 years in the future or 300 years in the future. <laughs> and you know, where we have advanced technology, like really significantly advanced technology, even informed by some alien technology. Like it's, you know, we're now we're not just us, it's the Vulcans and, and you know, other yeah. allies. And that's the best. And so some technology they have is way ahead of what probably can even ever right, exist. Yeah. And then other technologies like, and where are the robots? And where's the, yeah. right. yeah. and where's the nanotechnology? And where's the advanced right. medicine? And everyone still right. only has a right. life expectancy of 78 years. Yeah. And yeah, where's yeah, the they nanotech? Didn't, they didn't fix the whole telomere shortening thing, you know, in humans by now. Yeah. The problem is a lot of it's just too hard in terms of like, you know, having an artificial super intelligence in, in, in the plot or a really mature nanotech or even, at, you know, yeah. femtotech or atotech. But again, there's, there are certain it's things. Hard. It, yeah, it messes I, with your plot. I know like, that. Ah. So then what you need to do, if, so if, you, if you don't think you can deal with it, if you don't think you can write a story that can deal with the presence of advanced AI in your world, then you invent a reason why it yeah. doesn't exist. Right. right. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't take a lot. And again, like Dune did it, but you doesn't have to be that extreme. It doesn't have to be you know, so absolutely extreme as doing, you could even just say like, you know, after the third time when you know, a sentient AI almost took over the universe, we decided to ban them, you know, mm -hmm. and, and then there, there are absolute limits on like, on, on, on certain types of, of AI, anything that would be self-aware or whatever. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, what, what Star Trek series deals with that the most is lower decks. Yeah. Whole, they right. They have whole episodes. Did you did you see they have that, like the museum that, where with all of the sentient AIs that tried to take oh over the God. world? That's and they have like their the their version of Clippy. Like it's the um the, the badge badgy, you know. Oh my God, <laughs> and, 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 and because but it's like a, it's a hologram of a Star Trek That's badge. Great. And he's there to help you, you know. And then, of course, it becomes malevolent and tries to take over the universe. In a lot of ways, Lower Decks is like the best Trek out it's, there. It's, 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 it is. The writing is getting really it good. It is created by people that not only have an intense love for Trek, but they have the deepest knowledge of yeah. Trek. They, there are references there. I don't care how much of a Star Trek fan you are. There's going to be references in episodes that will go right over your head. Yeah. Um, because it's just, it's just chock full and so deep. And here's a technology one that, again... 
you know, Lower Decks gets it better than any other series. In one episode, um, what's the main guy character? I forget his name. Um, but he he is gets killed in an explosion. Uh, he legit gets killed. He's dead in an explosion. And then in the next scene, he's alive because they Transport? revived him. No, they revived him. Yeah, yeah they, they, have... used their, they used their 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 medical technology yeah. to bring him back. And right. they're like, I remember the first time I died. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. like dying <laughs> right. is not that big a deal because you just, <laughs> yeah. you know, get him back. You know, it's yeah, true. but I don't. I well, think they, they would redefine. Boiler, yeah. Good. They would. They would redefine. They, I don't but, think they would say died because then well, because it's re yeah, well, they constituted re like. I mean, uh, if you like, like cardiac started. arrest, like if you stop breathing now, a hundred years ago, but they probably dead. like the irony of the fact that you actually are, by classic definitions, you are dead, but it's not that big a deal anymore. Because yeah, you just... it's, yeah, it's it's better. The joke is worth it. Yeah, it's yes, worth it. It's fun. Yeah. And don't forget, <sighs> don't forget the whole angle of hard science, realistic, hard sci-fi. In a lot of ways, is boring as hell. Yeah. In, in terms of you always the, need a gimme. Oh, in and terms, I get that. right? In terms of the things that we really love, I mean, space battles in the, in a real future are going to no be. Way. They're going to be. There's like Not, basically it ain't no Star cloaking. Wars. Yeah. The idea of just cloaking your ship is ridiculous, uh, because you are in empty space and you are emitting tons of. You, it's almost mm -hmm. basically impossible to really cloak yourself like we see on, on yeah. Star Trek. And it's going to be far distance. You know, it's not going to be, you know, la you know, phaser lasers yeah. at close distance. It's going to be far away. It's just going to be kind of, and of course, FTL is bullshit. So, so it's going to be no boring. Shields. It's, yeah, and shields. It's going to be boring in a lot of ways. Yeah, but you have to make that but, interesting in that way. Right. You know, that's and all. I want to see it. I mean, we've had the uh, the Expanse. Which, the Expanse which was great. Even they, yeah. they had a couple of gimmies here and there for sure. But we need more. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I want to see. Yeah, no, the Expanse is a, is a good example of how you work with the technology. You work with the physics. It's realistic. And it becomes part of the show becomes part of the story you know the fact that it, it took time to get places even though they they compressed it even you know they had to figure out a way to do that um it is important you know the fact that you need high high g you know that and then there's low g when you're not accelerating like that was all part it was one of the challenges of the world that they're in and that it that it was something that the characters had to deal with and it would interfere yeah, it would became one of the conflicts right man yeah. versus nature kind absolutely of. Yeah, yeah absolutely whereas like in it's star classic. trek you know it's like oh, our technology fixes everything so if we if we want that kind of conflict it has to magically not work and then it just becomes like doesn't this anything ever work <laughs> right know? where's the, the internal <laughs> consistency yeah <laughs> yeah right gone 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 people want to talk about my uh dead 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 yeah let's oh, talk yeah. about tech here by your busted wing over there? Yeah, Epida's <laughs> wings are busted. <laughs> what the hell's going on there? They slapped on to me the other day. They said, here, put this on. I said, I don't know. Ah! No, <laughs> oh, shit, it hurt? <laughs> no, it didn't hurt. So what this <coughs> device does, and someone, what did they call it? A Pip-Boy? Some, someone called it. Yeah. Is that what that is? They didn't give it a name. So what happened was, this game. is so, I had the surgery, what, a week yeah. ago, Tuesday. And then yeah. my follow-up mm -hmm. appointment with the surgeon was this past Monday. So go in, see the surgeon. They take x-rays. She shows me the, uh, what, the metal now, the little metal button that's in, in, my, in my forearm. This is, this is in my forearm where it is right now. And uh, also she starts poking around saying, does this hurt? Does this hurt? Does this hurt? Can you feel this? Can you feel that? Okay, everything's nominal. <laughs> and then someone else comes in a few minutes later and they say, they're going to fit you with a brace. All right, they come in and they put this brace on me. What the brace does is it prevents my arm from extending. It stays at a 90 degree angle. I can bring it up, all right? They don't even really want me doing that. They want me to assist my lifting my arm up to myself. So it can go that direction, but I can't go out any further. So I cannot go straight yeah. up with the arm. And what the, and this hinge here, what they're going to do is as dial time goes up. on, they'll, they'll dial it. So instead of 90 degrees, it'll go to 100 degrees, then 120, then 150 or whatever whatever the steps are along the way until they deem I don't have to wear this anymore, which I think will be four to five weeks. Okay. Um, but That's they otherwise, yeah, not too bad. They otherwise want me to keep it on at all times, except for showering. Um, and, and, but they want me sleeping with it, mm -hmm. which can be, you know, a little yeah. uncomfortable, Sucks. but I, but I've been managing and, um, I joke with people. If I ever want to fire something that's attacking me from this direction, I just hold my arm out. <laughs> fire like that. Yeah. Um, so that is the story of my gizmo. 
Is it no, hard Pip to Boy is something that's worn on your the forearm of the main character in the Fallout series of Oh, is that okay? Games. That's why cuz cuz I I'm, I'm not Fallout, so that's why I didn't get yeah. the uh, the reference. What were you saying, Jade? Is it uh... Is are you having trouble showering or anything? Like what's your daily life like? Um for the most part it's good. Um there are some there are some times I will move my arm in a way that will trigger the pain. The pain yeah. from the surgery, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. right, and the, the the localized pain that I'm experiencing, but also my bicep is uh, very sore as well, um, and uh, that will kind of come and go. And I'm just uh, I'm simply using ibuprofen to mm -hmm. uh, to de to manage that at this point. Um, but other than that, and and the limitation I have on extending right. my arm, that's the extent of it. Um, I'm otherwise doing pretty much everything else I've been doing. And you're right-handed, Ev. I am. Thank Good. goodness for that. That was so the only saving grace on this whole thing. Yeah, but how about typing? Uh, okay, so typing, um, it's easier if I have a detachable keyboard, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. as opposed to a keyboard affixed to a laptop. Yeah. So I got it. So it, and I use a laptop at work. So I got myself an external keyboard. Yeah, you can get in order to compensate. Keyboard. So I can angle it in such a way in which yeah. I kind of keep my hand, my left hand, close here and reach out a little further with my right. Um, my fingers are all good. There's no problem there. There's yeah. mm -hmm. no no issues. And um, I'm not. I, I'm making more errors in my typing. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I, I think I'm hitting a character. I'm hitting the button next to it. So it is taking a little getting used to uh, I, bro I broke my wrist wrist bone here this is like 20 years ago now it uh, I remember I had the cast on at 9 11 so I always remember when it was so it was 2001 yep um and if they immobilized my thumb and they immobilized my proximal finger joints you know so I like I could move the ends of my fingers but I couldn't move my fingers like that I couldn't type my couldn't left hand type. was basically worthless for typing no. for how long for several for, months. Yeah. Wow. Oh my God. Yeah. Now that was horrible because I do so much typing and like one of the one of the few things that allows me to be as productive as I am is I could type very fast. But now I'm like at quarter speed typing. It was horrible. Did you have to type with your nose? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was not that bad. And I still have my dominant hand. Yeah. Yeah, it was a scalp yeah. fracture. Did but, you ever and, consider doing, you know, speech? Oh, you could put that probably this didn't is 2001. Yeah, we didn't have it. Yeah. Oh, was I didn't, I, I, you could tell somebody else to type. You didn't have a podcast, you didn't have a blog, yeah. you didn't have, you know, but you still had to type. You need so a one handed keyboard. Somebody was asking, they said they noticed that I didn't sound good on the show last week. That's because I got bronchitis. Bronchitis. <laughs> uh oh. Ain't yeah. Nobody got time for that. <laughs> that video, God, that video was awesome. <laughs> Ian. You should play that. All right, I'll look it up. Fine. All right. Um, by the way, thank you. I'll say thank you now. Everybody's saying glad to hear you're well and recovering. Thank you so much. I appreciate everybody sending me the, uh, mm. uh, the get wells. Thank you. Yeah, I was worried when you first happened. I mean, that's a scary injury, man. It's, I mean, my first it's my first injury of this nature in which I had to have a surgical repair. So, yeah, getting. Oh. Whole getting experience. knocked out is an experience. Woo! Was it ever? Getting it's, what? When you when you get knocked out in surgery, like mm -hmm. your brain is like not functioning. Like you don't have yeah. time sense at all. You you None. get knocked nope. out, and then hours could go by, and you wake up, and it feels like all of a sudden no, no, no. you're conscious, and you're like. I'm the last no time, time I had anesthesia, it was like you know, quote unquote, conscious sedation, but it was anesthesia. Um, the you know they had me do the uh the whole counting thing and um i remember so i remember they were actually that wasn't even counting they were they were just they were giving me the anesthesia and like people are you know they're milling about you know doing getting everything set up and then they're still milling about doing stuff and i'm like wait wait is it over like did it, like it happen so seamlessly? It took me a moment to realize that I, it was over. Yeah, you know what I yeah, mean? Like a oh, absolutely. Yeah. 
Steve, that's exactly really what, what happened to me. I, they were prepping me for surgery. I was sitting in an upright position in the, in yeah. the bed, right? They had the backup. And they were they they were prepping my arm, the orange stuff, you know, the goo, whatever that is. Yeah. The goo, the area. Area. That's that's on my left arm. In my right arm is the IV. And they said, okay, we're gonna start giving administering the yeah. anesthesia now, or which one one of the and I have a list of the drugs here that they gave me during the surgery. Yeah. Uh which one would it have been? Versed. Let's see if that's on there. Uh, do, 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 yeah, the, first, the first thing they gave me was uh, midazolam. Mm -hmm. I, don't know. I think that's to just calm you down and make you pliant. Right. So and propofol, that was the one. Yeah, propofol. propofol. So is, when they put the prop, they started, I think, administering yeah, the propofol. Yeah. That's the one that, that killed it. Michael Jackson. And yep. that was yeah. it. I was a, I was you're, asleep. You got you done. I was like, and yeah, this was no before drinking. they even on the on the arm where they operate, where they put in the nerve block agent. This was before that. Yeah. And I woke up. It was two hours later. I woke up weird. I was in the same position. I wasn't laying on my back. I was in that same upright position for whatever reason. But I was yeah. in a different room. And I'm like, I don't like, did something happen? Right. Like, something not happened. a clue. And if there wasn't a, like there was no clock on the wall in the room I was in to start. And there was a clock on the wall when I woke up. And that was the only kind of difference thing I could make out. It's like, okay, there's a clock. They moved me. Something happened. Yeah, yeah. That was my yeah. clue. That I've my never clue. woken Otherwise, up in the, in the operating room. I always wake up in like the recovery room. Um, yeah. And it is fascinating yeah. how like to, to, my experience with, with those same meds, Ev, is that I just suddenly become conscious, and I'm and I'm not groggy, and I, and I don't. I, yeah, it's I don't not like you're not like falling asleep and wait. You just it's just an edit out of your of your yeah. life for it's two hours. Right. 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 I remember I was like ten years old. I had Pause my button. first surgery. I had like oral surgery where I had to get be put under, and same experience. It was just an editing out of that time period with zero awareness of what happened in between, and that was the first time I'm like shit. There's no life after death. Yeah. <laughs> because when your brain is off, you don't exist. That's right. What right? did you remember you not... before you were born? Yeah. yeah. Zeppo. Yeah. Yep. That's it. There's your but death. It also makes me appreciate anesthesiologists because their job, oh, yeah. that, th this is why they make a lot of money and they got to go through a lot of schooling because it is so hard. It is so hard to keep you unconscious and unfeeling. It's, it's her, her, amazingly difficult and i love in the movies where they they spray something in your face or whatever and you're knocked out <laughs> you're knocked out yeah yeah no no oh. no that you it's it's so hard to yeah do they that. put that stuff it, in the handkerchief and then they go up yeah. and well, that, oh yeah the the out from that. The but 1870 the, the, the trick with anesthesia is, is maintaining you at, at a really deep anesthesia so you're not moving Right. So it's different to be knocked unconscious and laid down in a chair or something. It's different to be so unconscious they could cut into you and don't and you don't move right. and you Not don't wake up. And, right. And you yeah. Don't but the other thing that kill the other thing that kills me is is in a lot of TV, a lot of movies, it's, it's ubiquitous. It really is it's ubiquitous where somebody gets knocked out, punched, yeah. Yeah. right, hit on the head, you are knocked out, and it could be anywhere from ten minutes to like multiple hours have passed. And the thing is, people get knocked out. It happens. But if you get knocked out, you have a concussion. You, you, get you back come up back. Again? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> it's a song. You, if you, you back really, back. yeah. <laughs> if you get knocked out, <laughs> if you if you get knocked out, you <laughs> will be you will be down. conscious again, <laughs> probably within moments. Right? It doesn't five seconds, ten seconds. Doesn't how hard you get. You hit. will start. You will start coming back. But if you get knocked out and you wake up in an hour. You are going to the emergency room because right. you have a serious, serious concussion yeah. and other things. You're not just going to shake it off after an hour. Or I mean, cop shows minutes. and stuff, they, they hit you with the butt of a gun like a fucking expert. You know, they hit you. The guy's knocked out. And then like a few hours later, the character <laughs> wakes up. And then like they're the only totally thing that happens it. is that you were unconscious. Yeah. Yeah, so we, right. we <laughs> use like when somebody has a head injury. First question is, did you lose consciousness? Right. Yep. And if you did lose consciousness, how long were you out yeah. for? And that is pretty much directly proportional to the the amount of yeah. concussion that you have. Mm -hmm. Right. And also to the length of time it's going to take to recover from your concussion, yeah. which could be days, weeks, months or never. Mm -hmm. Like you never get back to your pre concussion baseline. You always are going to have something.
then that is not that. uncommon, by the way. No, it's, it's very, very common. Yep. And, yeah. Yeah. Hollywood yeah, knockouts. Yeah, the, 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 I, I, I know, right? It's such a, in one of my a, blogs, I think. The whole, the whole trope of the knockout yeah, in it, the movies it is. is stupid. It is a trope. It, it boils down to four words. Time, it happens. Four words. This is what Perry used to say when we would LARP. And this was kind of the, the underlying theme. <laughs> As yeah. per dramatic effect. Yes. That's right. it. That's what it came down to. You're, <laughs> however the knockout needs to work, however long, <laughs> whatever. Me, yeah. As per whatever dramatic it needs to be. That's the storytelling effect. That's it. Right. I teach my kids like head protection, like oh, absolutely, be super careful with Always your yeah. head. Protect oh. your head at all costs. Yep. Yes, mm -hmm. you are your head. No, nope. absolutely. Um. So anyway, bronchitis sucks. Yes, yeah. bronchitis this is oh. awful. Does it suck or does it blow? Blow. <laughs> blow you no. Know, so what happens is you go to bed, and then when you wake up, there is an incredible amount of bad stuff in your lungs. Yeah. And so it's really bad for like the first few hours in the morning because you're just, oh man. And then like if I laugh, I, I cough. Triggers. Yeah. If I sneeze, I cough. If I breathe in too quickly, I cough. You have and reactive it, airways, as we say. Yeah. It really sucks. Yeah, very reactive. Yeah. Um, Here we go. Here we go. Oh, yeah. She's and awesome. then the smoke got me. I got bronchitis. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god she's classic that clip is that, <laughs> right, here we go last day. oh god um, i love her so much yeah what, she's that, that clip has got to be 20 years old by now uh, uh, 11 years old oh, it's seems 11? About, okay. well that's when it was posted at least on this channel the thing but, about I, that video to me is she is so legit yeah right like you can't She's fake telling it like it yes is. that yes. is like her experience yes. it's so real it's such a human deal right there i love it <laughs> oh my God. And they they made a song out of that. Oh uh, yeah, those, of uh, course they did. Small Yoho. <laughs> those guys are awesome. You want another quiz? We do, and that okay. uh, segues nicely into something that I was still working on. But let me uh, kind of do that real quickly. Wrong Here we go. Right. It's gonna be a little bit of a Christmas quiz. Oh hey. Ready. hey. For a little Christmas, and let me do one more. Bob and Steve, quiz. I like what you did with your. Christmas. There we go. Oh, yes. There we go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, Rampus, baby. I knew it. I knew it. Oh, Krampus. Krampus. That's oh, a no. good one. I ah. want that mask. Where'd yes. it go? Hold on. You, you guys disappeared. There we go. Yeah, that's a good one. Quiz. Okay, it's not a everybody quiz. It's just a on-screen quiz. Oh, uh, okay. So, in a way, it's everybody. I didn't come prepared. But in but... another way, it's only us. Um, all right, let me share that real quick and shout out to this podcast apparently that exists called the Dorky Geeky Nerdy Podcast for putting together a quiz. <laughs> I wonder what it's nice. about. We're stealing it. Yeah. Can you guys see that, uh, Bob and uh, Steve? Or hold on, let me make Not, it bigger. That's better. All right. It, the okay. thing on the side will disappear. I'll okay. also read it out. <clears throat> all right. Let's go to this. So in. In many Christian Advent. faiths, okay, yes, sorry. wait for me to finish it, particularly <laughs> yeah. Catholic Catholicism, what is the season starting four Sundays before Christmas? We have Advent. Anybody else? It would I be mean, you're saying season. Like, are we talking about summer, fall, winter, spring? What are we talking about? That's an interesting well, point. What is the season starting? Well, I guess it's in the Christian it's Catholic a, it's tradition. It's a period Equinox. of time. Is it equinox? No, no, no it's not a moment. It's a month. It's ad, like it's it's ad, the advent, advent calendar. The advent yeah. calendar, right? Right. Okay. Let me put this down here. Visto Tutti said shopping. You got that right, shopping. dude. Good. Yeah. Twenty-five yeah. days of shopping. Right. In Mexico, what is the traditional procession that is performed in the latter half of December? Is that the, um, the, the celebration of the dead? Is that no, that the one? Day of the well, dead is it earlier? Right? I think that's earlier because it's like uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's warm out. Dead. The dead uh, the days of the dead. Let's the, see if uh, anybody in uh, uh, the chat knows. Cristo de uh, something. Uh, uh, Cristo, Cristo. Uh, something with Cristo. Morto de Cristo. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's Easter. <laughs> that's true. What's birth Death. in in Spanish? <laughs> um, um, uh, we don't see. know what's the answer. Don't know about the procession. No. Parade of the Tomorrow. La Posada. <laughs> All right, because no, never heard. That's of it. probably the procession. Uh, Doesn't Posada mean procession? Probably does. Maybe. Yeah. Moving. La Posada. Uh, or like the little thing. I don't know. Why. Maybe that's oh, Posito. No. Uh, what country gave us the songs "Oh Christmas Tree" and "Silent Night"? 
Germany. I'd say Germany, yeah. Germany. Yeah, yeah. No, ta- yeah oh, Knocked. Yeah, oh, yes, does it? Yeah, Germany. Germany. Ja, mein Herr. mein Führer. Okay. So I don't know how to pronounce this, but what is wassail or wassail? Wassail. 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 Deutschland. What well, is wassail? I have no idea. Water wassail? something. Water sale. Uh, Water sale? Uh, what's the for song? sale? Um, no, I I do not know. Genoa, like the ham. Here we go. That's something to do with Christmas. Hot mulled cider. It's a drink. Right. Right. What's oh, mold? Okay. It's like when you That's put spices, spices in it and stuff. Spices ah. in it. Yeah, but uh, you can oh, do that with by wine. The way, like when I stuck cloves in the orange when I was five yeah. years old. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. You should try it, mold. man. Mold cider is delicious. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm sure I have had it. I just, I'm just not wasn't familiar with the uh it's was l apparently was l. 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 With the, uh, so here's the next one that people are already guessing where are you if someone wishes you mele kiliki maka. that's hawaiian you're yeah, in hawaii. hawaii there you go or and you're probably bing crosby yeah. oh, i love oh, the way good. the hawaiian sound. i love the way that language sounds yeah, yeah. it's very musical yeah very cool. in austrian tradition what being captures naughty boys and girls hey, in a sack hey bob Krampus. come on bob Krampus. Krampus. I, I love him. Be good, so or much. you'll get a beating in the sack from Krampus. <laughs> he, he's going to be a part of every Christmas until I die. From 100%. now on, he's, oh, like, yeah, he's too awesome. He's just so Trump. Bob. Like, what took Trump. me so long like, to get on the Krampus Santa train? Santa Trump is I've loved him for years, but I'm like deep into it now. <laughs> yeah, uh, the cavalcade of lights is celebrated in what Canadian city? More than one. Mm-hmm. Um, cavalcade of lights. It would be in. It's not in French, so I don't know, Quebecers. I don't know, Quebecois. Or Saskatoon. Probably Saskatoon. Where are are our Canadians? Yeah, where are Canadians? Calgary. Calgary? Shout out to Discord. We have some Montreal. We've got some Toronto going. Boom. Toronto. 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 Beautiful city. Toronto. Drake celebrates. I got to get there someday. The city of Riga, Latvia, claims yep. to have decorated the first what? Christmas tree. Yeah, well, yeah, I would say Christmas yeah, tree. I would, I would say Christmas tree. Christmas well, bush. Christmas that bush. Or, that or a wreath. It's, but, uh, uh, I think a... it's the donkey. Don't make, a Christmas tree. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, man. The 12 days of Christmas end on what date? Uh, Christmas Eve. There's a date? Oh, really? It's, it, it's in sync first with a calendar? day of Christmas. Or is it New Year's? Does it end at New Year's? Let's That's see. A good question. Boom. January 6th or the Feast of the Epiphany. Oh, oh okay. That's very, so it starts at Christmas, doesn't it? Very Catholic. Catholic. Yeah. The 12 days of Christmas. Yeah. I hate that the song, Feast the of the Epiphany. A lot of birds. I saw a lot of birds, yeah, a lot of bad food. So annoying. It's, like, it's yeah. like getting hit on the head with a frying pan 20 times. <laughs> What is? <laughs> you start to dread as it goes on, you start to dread what's coming, you know? What do you mean? The 12 what Days of Christmas, that song. It's like a cheese grater on my face. Oh, you don't like the song? The song. It's terrible. The repetitive oh, like nature of it? In a pear kind tree? Of... La, la, the... Oh, God. Da, da, da. Now I know, what the... to get, I know what to get you for Christmas now. Yeah, you don't think the Paul McCartney one is somehow Ooh, more grating? That's a bad song. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that like three <laughs> times already this year. I'm like, all right, I'm done, done with, with that, that one. Yeah, I think Two total you can hear that and once. Up here. <laughs> Only isn't once. That, isn't it true that all 12 are are birds? All of them, all twelve no. are birds. Even well, there's five, five golden. Rings. What's a golden ring? Oh. It, I think it was referring to like a, a rings around what's some a birds' made milk, or something. What's a made of milking? No, they. It, and Piper piping. Yeah, they. they Piper is. I I recently heard that they every single one refers to a type of bird. Mm. Okay. Um, well, I don't know what about the twelve. Be, but... There is they, a well. Lord's it. a leaping. Birds don't have milk, right, Steve? Well, a good lord bird. Good lord. Can you melt Good lord. Chicken? Good lord um, bird. You guys know birds, what that was? What the good see. lord bird was? Mm-mm. Nope. It's a scary it's so one. big and Penguin? beautiful you would say good lord when you <laughs> saw it. <laughs> so, big. so big. So <laughs> big. That was a peacock. Nope. Wait, what are we saying? Ostrich. What's you guess the bird. The bird. That was called the good lord bird. Good lord. Good lord. Good lord. Good What's the one that like kills you with the big claws? The freaking raptor. A terror bird. Yeah, no, but Thunderbird. Like the, the, they exist right now. It's a woodpecker. A woodpecker. It's extinct. Oh, the uh, oh, the ivory build. Ivory build. Ivory build woodpecker. Uh, we think it's extinct. Okay. It's extinct. <laughs> eh, I'm, I'm holding out hope. Yeah. Apparently, the eleven pipers piping might be birds. 
<laughs> but not necessarily the rings. The rings are rings. But there's a lot of birds in there. Including, I don't know. Maybe. Including rings, according to what I heard. Yeah. Okay. Put a ring on a bird. Bird ring? What's a bird ring? Bird, bird ring. A ring necked a... pigeon? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, something. Yeah, it could be something like that. All uh, right. People in what country books. exchange books on Christmas Eve and then spend the evening reading them and eating chocolate? Uh oh, eating chocolate. Oh, uh, that sounds like an awesome Netherlands. Netherlands. Oh, I would expect Switzerland. Switzerland. Netherlands. Switzerland. Oh. Switzerland. 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 Let's chocolate. See. Iceland. 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 Best, best tradition, tradition ever. ever. The chocolate part's good. The chocolate part's good, yeah. Well, it depends on the book. Too. Reading books, yeah. everyone. Are yeah. they pornographic? Well, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> you guys that's, ever see that's the Greenland. Movie, the they do that. After movie? the kids go to bed. What? Yeah, yeah it's, it's funny. Me. Oh, God, I love that movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, the geeky round. Santa Claus goes by what name in France? Oh, gosh. Um, uh -huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. uh, it would be Santa Pierre. Uh, 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 Monsieur, 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 Croc Monsieur. Now we're we going to all make fun of the French. Yeah, French. Pere, Pere Noel. Noel. Hey, Pere Noel. Pere Noel. In oh, the UK, Pere. the tradition of opening the alms box and distributing money to the poor was done on what day? Boxing Day. Christmas Eve. Yeah, boxing day I would say one. Boxing Day is a good. good it's in guess. a box. What's in the box? What's in the, in the box? box? It's Boxing Day, December 26th. Hey, there you good go. guess, guys. Day later. Box. Very good. In what country would you find the grand market running from 6 p.m. on Christmas Eve into Christmas morning? This seems very specific, but maybe not. The grand uh, market? Grand market? What market. country? Uh, no idea. It sounds like Istanbul kind of stuff. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, like, like, what are we but talking that's Muslim about country. Here? What am I talking yeah, about? Yeah, but that's Muslim. Unless there's, so is there a Christian uh, Arabic country? That would be Armenia. Yeah. Armenia? Say Armenia. Oh. Okay. There you go. Jamaica. Jamaica. Grand All Market. Right. All right. Good for Jamaica. Okay. Uh, right. Other Sounds side fun. of the world. Yeah. Ireland. Uh, in India, lanterns shaped like what are strung up between houses. Lanterns Cr shaped Krampus's like what head. are strung up between no, houses. No. Uh, cows. In India. No. Lanterns. I'm going to guess lanterns? here. Um, Bells. Stars. Stars. I don't know. Let's see. I don't know. Stars. Stars. Yes, Good my job. third guess was correct. Yeah. Good job, man. <laughs> <laughs> the Giant Lantern Festival is held in San Fernando in what country? Oh, that's California. That's the United States of America. The country of Philippines. Philippines. So what? <laughs> Philippines not a state. Come on. <laughs> it said country. Yeah. <laughs> but close enough. It used to be a colony. It, it is true. In Gavli, 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 whatever, in Sweden, Sweden. they, Sweden, they Sweden. build a 13 meter tall what? <laughs> a building out of ice. Easy. 13 meter, not Krampus. Easy. Oh. Uh, it would be a 13 meter angel. I'll say angel. Angel. Bob? Uh, ice Hotel. Ice Hotel. Snowman. Oh, have you seen Chad, the Chad said the Ikea. <laughs> Chad said Ikea and goat. And so let's see if goat? Chad. A goat. Goat. Holy shit. Who got that? Wow, we have a lot of stuff. <laughs> the, Yule, the Yule goat. Krampus Yule evolved goat. out of the. It's so Christmasy. Right? That's pretty cool. The horns from, right, Bob? Yeah, it's it's yeah. pressed wood or it's whatever that shit wood. Um, in Norway, what do people hide on Christmas Eve? Ooh, their erections, not the sauce. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Children. What do they hide? They hide what they hide um, the gifts for the kids, right? Gifts. Yeah, the gifts. They or they hide the, the, the children. Christmas, the meat, the, 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 the <laughs> feast for the for the Christmas day. They hide they hide the gifts that they're giving their. They hide the salami. You know, That's too uh, obvious. <laughs> They're chilling. Tax returns. No, they're, no, they're, they're girlfriends. They're, oh, yeah. they're extra marital. They're, 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 gu con they're gumads. Con gumads. Gumads. <laughs> Eggs. Someone said, yeah. Uh, somebody said wicker. Uh, they're brooms. Okay. They hide their broom. Of course. Yeah, obvious answer. Keep the... I, thought it was just, I just thought it was too obvious. To say yeah, I got to get up and hide my broom now. Like, what yeah. the hell was going to happen with the broom if you don't hide it? <laughs> there wasn't a lot going on. Back there. There. Krampus <laughs> would take it and beat you with the broom. <laughs> Maybe it's, it's not a day for cleaning. It's a day for just an, yeah, Krampus enjoying a holiday. Yeah. I don't There's got to be That's some true. mythology. Yeah, Somebody probably. please email me the answer to that. Yes, please. Maybe it's a witch's uh, a tradi uh oh call George. A traditional Ukrainian Christmas Eve supper contains how many courses? Uh-oh. Of potatoes. Eleven. Eleven. Uh, seven. Eleven. Seven. seven courses. Seven's a good Gotta number. Be a prime say, number. Yeah, I agree with Evan. Seven? I think it's eleven. 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 Eleven, eleven pops into my head. Ooh, eleven. eleven. That's wait, should I call George right now and ask Yeah, him? call him. See if we'll Oh yeah, it. okay. Pause. 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 <laughs> wait for it. Don't Google. By the way, Chat. great answers by the uh by the audience here. Yes. Uh, Hold on. I think you discord for hilarious there. stuff. Hold on, wait for George. Hold on. He's gonna be like, What? <laughs> 
I'm You'll go, hey, hey, hey. You. Hey, I'm busy. Hey, hey. <laughs> it is a weekend night. You might be out gigging. He's probably yeah. out there. Gigging? That's the gig G- economy. Gigging. No? He's not going to pick up. Oh, he's busy. That guy. Don't we have a standing agreement when we call, he picks up? All right. Wait, wait, wait. Shut it off. Just in case it says his phone number. Oh, yeah. Hold on. I'll, I'll no, ask no, no, him no, no, a question. No. I'll ask him and, and see. Okay, I'm going to mute you, and then I'll mute it. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, thanks for protecting. George, go. I'm leaving you a voicemail. We're on the live stream, and we have a question. A traditional Ukrainian Christmas Eve supper contains how many courses? We just wanted to know if you know see the answer. See if he's right. See you soon, bud. Bye. Bye, bye. Okay, very good. Should we save that and then wait till he calls back? He, yeah, I mean, I left him a message. Okay, yeah, why not? We'll see Come if he back. calls back. Right. Yeah. Okay. Bolivians bring what animal to Christmas Eve mass? A pig. Pig. That's okay. a great question. What the hell? What kind of animal would they bring to Christmas? Eve? What what kind of animal would they have handy? A lamb. I don't I mean, think it's probably a great like question. yeah, something to bless. Something maybe? to slaughter. But you you know well, you can't don't you don't know. slaughter an animal in a couple it. of hours. That takes a lot of work. Yeah, slaughtering season is usually <laughs> okay. the before that. Somebody said mother their favorite I, pet. I, yeah, their I'm, favorite I'm pet. That. Mother. Mouse. Donkey. Donkey. Llama. I mean. It's probably too big for a, a Co- llama. Cocaine I mean, a bear. Maybe. Guinea pig. That would be Peru, not Bolivia. I mean, Ooh, see, people are saying groundhog we, guinea pig. Cocaine it, bear. Although maybe Bolivians do that too. I don't know if they eat <laughs> guinea pig. All right, what do we got? <laughs> Roosters. <laughs> that makes sense. I should have thought of there. Bring cock your cocks. Yeah, yeah. Bring yeah. your cocks to church. Hey, don't forget um, to bring your cock. You have a nice cock. Okay. What country <laughs> now we're age restricted? Thanks. What country's oh, version God. of Santa Claus is Dead Moroz or Grandfather Frost? Grandfather I like Frost. Grandfather cool. Frost. Yeah, That's Grandfather Frost cool. is pretty cool. They call me Dead Moroz. What's that guy's name? Uh, I will say Portugal. They call oh, me God. 20. Snowbizer. Remember that? I haven't seen that in a long time. Brown it's out puppy. there. A year without a Santa Claus. I remember that year. Uh, so yeah, I, remember Rose. I don't know what that would like. I Russia. think it's Wakanda. I'd say Portugal. All right, we got Russia. Russia. Oh. Fuck Russia. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> In Lithuania, what is celebrated on December 24th? Um, mm. Christmas. <laughs> they got, they, they, they got yeah. the calendars wrong. They Christmas. couldn't book the hotel. Yeah, the right. <laughs> Christmas Eve. What Christmas is he celebrated on December twenty fourth? Ah, that is crazy. What would they be celebrating on mass. Christmas I mean, Eve? Mass? Because are they Orthodox? You know, maybe isn't it Christmas kind of? I don't know if it's the same time, but I know some of the other stuff was. Well, Christmas mass, evening mass, or something. The day before. All right, here we go. Oh, Kuchos. Wait, what? All right, now I gotta look that up. Um, but that doesn't that doesn't tell me anything. It doesn't right? answer the question. Pusios, yeah. Well, Lithuania. they tell us how to pronounce the the answer that we don't know. Is the traditional Christmas Eve dinner in Lithuania? So it's a dinner. I mean, it's like okay, everybody okay. does that. Christmas Eve. The meal dinner. is a family occasion which includes many traditions of both pagan and Christian origins. Some traditions are no longer widespread, and usually Lithuanians just enjoy dinner with relatives. Blah blah blah. Christmas is almost entirely pagan. Yeah. yeah, Christmas oh, Eve yeah. supper. Da, 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 da. Well, now it's capitalist. <laughs> we just buy stuff. So. Christ wasn't even born in December. What the hell is That's going true. on? I know the whole thing is made up. <laughs> it I mean, is. It is. It's a total fabrication. Yeah, I mean, look, Christmas something is a fun season, holiday. Like this, this whatever you celebrate at this around time the kids of year, and stuff, it's yeah. fun. It's family. It's fun. It's family. It's eating. It's friends. It's it, there's a lot of great things about it. But the three the religious the religious thing like when you are an adult and you really think about like the shit that they tell you, it's like what? Are you kidding me? Apparently, there's a lot of traditions with this involving weddings, where like uh, they put a pot of water is brought to boil and two pieces of coal are dropped into the water. If the coals come together, there will be a wedding. All right. Oh, <laughs> it's fortune telling. It's uh, yeah, yeah, tea leaf reading. I so like. So that's it. interesting. And there's yeah, a bunch yeah. of other things that they do. Apparently, it, it's apparently not carbon neutral though, because the the water, the hot water, will release some of that's that true. carbon into the atmosphere. Hot carbon water. Mm. Yeah. Water with so. a smack of carbon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Poinsettia. Whose are the national mm-hmm. emblem of what nation? This is an interesting. Yeah, one, I don't. I don't mean, know I mean, if we, it would. Ooh. That's a. <sighs> National emblem. It's amazing National how much emblem. information we don't know. I'll say Norway. <laughs> Most of it, in fact. Um, Any Norwegian? Norway? I mean, right. Where do they I grow go with them? Evan. I mean, Just I they don't last there. outside, so do they grow in a more temperate environment? 
Oh, I see what you're saying. You know what I mean? Australia. Australia. Okay, interesting. <laughs> I think it might be Australia. Madagascar. Interesting. Oh, cool. Or Madagascar. Oh. Pretty, you know, it's we got the <laughs> south part, but not the. I the never would have guessed that. No, nah, I'm not a chance. Madagascar. How many inane questions are left? No way. <laughs> Bob, don't worry. How dare you, Bob? In 1974, KFC <laughs> ran an ad campaign in what country with the slogan, Kentucky for Christmas? I oh, noticed. that was Japan. Japan, oh, yeah. yeah. Probably Japan. They are yep. very, very really? good. Japan. Big deal. Yeah. KFC's, KFC's, yeah. KFC is a big fucking deal around Christmas in Japan. Yes. Yeah. What? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, Bob, I read about it. It's fascinating. For totally. some, has somehow yeah, they took so Japan to like them. Me. KFC be a part oh, of their well, deal. it's fried chicken. Yeah, they of do like their works. holidays, like, <laughs> like yeah, like, like the big you know celebratory meal they have at KFC. So I gotta tell you guys a quick story. Oh, so okay, pause. Make it good. I haven't oh, had ooh. sex. This is right. probably like water. <laughs> roughly five years ago. It was my wow. birthday. My wife asked me what I wanted, and I'm like, I haven't had Kentucky Fried Chicken in 30 years. What? I'm like, Whoa. I want to have it. I want to try it, you know? Good. Good. And I got to tell you, man, it was a grease bomb. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I remember eating that as a kid, and it was so good, I couldn't believe it. And now, I'm like, holy Christ, I, how could people eat that stuff? Like, I mean, the, the flavor mm -hmm. was good. Like, whatever they used, did, the did flavor you get the was good. the crispy skin one? It might have changed. Extra bad stuff might not be you. the same chicken we had when we were kids. But, but damn. Well, yeah, the recipe is uh, I prefer, I prefer, it's secret. I prefer Popeyes. Popeyes. I'm just going to get chicken. Popeyes, good. In my hometown said, here, Popeyes. Yes. In my in my hometown here, Popeyes. about a mm -hmm. month ago, a Chick Fil A opened, brand yep, new. Yep. So what this thing has done now is there is such a line of cars waiting to get into Chick Fil A. This is for order a chicken sandwich. It goes around the building into the into the uh, parking lot, which is part of like a shopping center. Comes out onto the street and clogs up traffic <laughs> on the main road for like a half mile. I kid you not. Crazy. I avoid it now because especially yeah, nobody goes there anymore. Time. It's too busy. Yeah, it's insane for, for chicken. Nobody wants that homophobic chicken. A chicken, chicken sandwich, my gosh. <laughs> the homophobic chicken. Yeah. yeah. What the Although, heck? I met I met some a good people chicken, that worked for Chick Fil A, <laughs> and they were obsessed with the company. Yeah, the, apparently oh, yeah. they are Ooh. pretty good. Other than they put an addictive chemical in it. Yeah, probably MSG. You crave it. Which for I, I went there. I had MSG's a chicken good. sandwich like four or five years ago, and I remember it was fairly tasty. Mm -hmm. it was yeah. I'm sure, but who laughs in vegetarian? Who would, would wait in line for it? Who would wait in line in a car Except for 40 for minutes for a no. chicken sandwich? No. It's got to be. Have, have you been to a Starbucks Everyone wants recently? to try it. Wait, no. there was a story about that. Starbucks is movie. insane how long the lines are. And I got to tell you, I've learned a lot about coffee like in the since uh, I've known my brother in law. And I've upgraded my coffee game. Like, Starbucks coffee is trash. It is <sighs> crap. Coffee, it really is bad, but people go there, they're obsessed with that brand in such a profound way. Like, so that's it. Like, the pe people become fans of a brand, and that's Look it. This. Look at they're this thing, go nuts for it. eight Cut, hour wait, eight hour for Idaho's first in and out. You, uh, I mean, which is correct. And I think it went to like 11 or 12 hours, like, it got so apparently they crazy. need another one. See, of that's not right. Like, like, there's something wrong with, with society. Like, with, well, <laughs> I don't know. I can't put my finger on it, but <laughs> you should. Nobody should be waiting eight hours for food. Have the, yeah. No one should have the desire to talking. want to wait up to eight hours to get a fast food product. Yeah, like a pretty. There's a huge. How, how do you work that into there. your schedule? That's true. Are these people all unemployed? Right, but if but if they're all in, then why know. would there be an eight hour wait? So it couldn't be that. It can't be that. Yeah, it just doesn't make any sense. It's, it's, it's probably it's like a, it's a it's a measurable percentage of the local population yeah. that are. I mean, in it could line. be a food <laughs> desert, and it's just like it's all yeah, fast. That's food what happens. Like, I mean, might there as are well. towns. There are small towns when they get their first fast food restaurant. It's a big deal. We it's had really in deal. Connecticut. Do you guys remember when the first Krispy Kreme opened yeah, Krispy Kreme. In, up in Berlin, Connecticut? I never I liked them. Was. Yeah. Off the Berlin Turnpike, which is kind of a fast You gotta get them hot. That Steve. sent the state into like a tizzy for Krispy Kreme donuts for the first couple months. You know, the novelty it's a wears in off. Pen, then we all went back to Dunkin' off. Donuts. It does. It yeah. all. It all. It all regresses back to normal. If but, you look at the, I saw a map of the number one coffee retailers in the in the country, and it's like most of the country is Starbucks, and then the eastern seaboard is Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin'. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, they've had a we've had a monopoly in the East with Dunkin' I mean, for as long as I've been isn't, alive. 
isn't a lot of of um, Starbucks? It's like glorified chocolate milk. Oh yeah, it's like right. It's like there's so they, they're much... a milk company, right? Jay, didn't you tell me that? Right. Yeah, they yeah, are. They, uh, yeah. they are. Milk their company. milk infrastructure, from what I read, is more complicated than their coffee infrastructure. Yeah. 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 Crazy. All right, yeah. let's get rid of this thing. I'll right, finish this okay. one. Oh, what was that? Oh, I lost Evan for a second. Here we go. Right. Evan, you back? Okay. Did, did the whole thing go down? It was just me. I think it was just you. Oh wait, I want to see the answer to this next one. Okay, in Iceland, what is the name for the 13 troll-like characters that come out to play before Christmas? Um, is that, is that Perch 10? It might be Perch 10, but I think they're after Christmas. So it's name of so I maybe hope you're it's right, not... Bob. P -E -R -C we need the names of each one or the name like <clears throat> collective? I think it's a collective. What is the name for the, the name. 13 troll-like characters? Here we go. The Yule Lads. Oh, I love it. That. That's a good ah, name for a band. I like that. That's yeah. A, yeah, or a game. Wow. The Yule, Yule Lads. Lads. The politicians. Thank you, Lee. <laughs> yeah. In what country do they ride roller skates to church on Christmas Eve? Oh, my, this is bullshit. It's got to be <laughs> paved or at least flat. Where, the, uh, where could uh, this <laughs> Oh skate uh, i don't know the roller skates everybody skate get your roller skates on let's go to church like what that's happening? all right it's, it's the southern hemisphere because it's warm right yeah you can't have much snow so I'm, what I'll, i'm brazil. gonna guess uh brazil. brazil that's what i said i i got nothing but... texas the country of go ahead texas. what is it southern hemisphere yeah, they venezuela i was so right. close i they was pretty right. close venezuela in was on colombia the right the Immaculate Conception is celebrated with what? Ooh. Um, um, condoms? A lot of, mas a lot of <laughs> masturbation? It's like, oops. No, the condom doesn't even work. The it's so immaculate. Is celebrated oh, actually, that's the other thing. What? Never mind. Um, she was immaculate. Uh, what would it be celebrated with? What would be an answer here? Mm. Auto erotica. Mm -hmm. A big celebrated meal? Celebrated with... Yeah. Drinks at the bar. Drinks. <laughs> Somebody said wet white. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <It's gross. laughs> Make me laugh. Uh, he's going to die. <laughs> hey, hang on. <laughs> Dia de, de las uh, velitas or the day of the little candles. Hey, hey don't look, look at my candles. Rude. Yeah. yeah. It's like, not little. It's an adequate candle. Pope Julius, I, oh, I declared. What, Pope Julius <laughs> the first declared December 25th to be Christmas Day in what year? Oh, interesting. Uh, that was, no. uh, that was Julius the first. Had to be around. No. No, like much earlier. Like 300 or something. 300. Yeah, I'll say 300. like whatever. I'll say 300. 500. I'll say 500. I'll say 500. 300. Bob? I don't care. <laughs> 350 AD. Yes. Yeah. yes. Got it. Nailed it. Ha <laughs> ha. What that. are the names of the three wise men? Frankie oh, just more. Curly. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, right. Louie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Haywood, Frank and Sense and Murr. <laughs> Frank, Frank and Murr. Murr, 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 I said. Mur. <laughs> they had names? <laughs> That's my question. They had names. <laughs> yeah, that is a good one. Balthazar, oh, Melchior, or whatever, Melchior, or whatever. Did, yeah. I don't know about you guys. Out of the Dungeons and Dragons, these, like good. these guys sound yeah. like villains. Yes, yeah. these are, they oh, are, yeah, man. These are underlings of Mephistopheles and Asmodeus mm -hmm. and stuff, right? Rebecca, is, what's her name? Demonic. Watson. Rebecca Fuchs got oh. it. She nailed it. Did she know? Why do you know that? Good job. Why do you know that? I don't know because people read. <laughs> yeah, yes. but what are they reading? The Bible? Apparently. <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. Checking it out if it's any updates. It have you ever read the Bible, Evan? Uh, no. Oh. I have. Okay, I've read. Yeah, more we had to. Parts school, of it, but no, I've. Nah. God damn it! Cover to cover. That would somebody said they're putting no the band back together. Much. And I just realized no spoilers. A, a three piece band that is themed after those three guys would be pretty cool. The three wise men. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Fruitcake no. originated in what ancient country? What ancient country? I'm gonna say, Why did it say ancient? Persia. I was gonna say Sweden, but I don't know. Uh, Persia, um, ancient country. Uh, an empire account. Probably because of, like dates in an ancient, ancient country. Yeah, Greece. Ah, Greece. Egypt. Egypt. Good I one. say Greece because they have Greece. figs and stuff. Figs. Jay, what did you say? I th I said Sweden, but I don't know how Sweden. ancient Sweden is. <laughs> Sweden's not ancient. Fruitland. Fruitland. <laughs> Connecticut. Yeah. Egypt. Egypt. That was close. Essential for the afterlife. All right. Okay. That's pretty cool. Does yeah, anybody, does anybody here eat fruitcake ever? Sometimes, I think people can make it really good occasionally. <laughs> but really like good. the box All right, stuff. I've had it. 
I, I've had it once where I ate it and I didn't want to spit it back out. <laughs> because it's so unbelievably dense and it was very people, dense. If they're using Ooh. candied fruit in there, to me, it's like oh, a yeah. curse. it's like a jelly oh. sort of oh god, it's like it's head it's cheese. Curse. Like get it's the hell out. That it could uh, that it could be it could last and be literally edible for decades. I probably Is that true? Don't know, but Sounds like a mess. Well, good with cheese. Oh, I've had that That's yeah, good. a long time ago. Well, it depends on what kind of preserve. Hey, I would try if somebody said, "Hey, I make a good fruit cake." I try it. You know what I mean? Yeah, but try I mean, it. You so can what, go on. You can go on YouTube. Then... You can go on YouTube. They have videos of sure people who like open canned food from like 1930. Oh you know, yeah, fruit cake. Oh God, guys, they, I just saw the funniest yeah. video. This guy opens up this can <clears> of canned fish from from Sweden. Oh yes, from what? And um, he, can fish he from cracks it open called? and immediately starts to, to chug like, it. Like, no, like no, he was going to throw up. The oh, smell Sir of Strumming. Him. Sir Strumming. That's what oh, my like. God. Right. That's it, Ian. That's it. It's te oh. like they won't let you bring it on mass transit, I think, because how pungent opens. it is and yeah. it's like rotten fish. Fermented pungent. shark is the other one that's bad. Yeah. That's I, I generally don't like food that is described as pungent. It's not a. <laughs> It's not an adjective a I like attached thing. to things I'm eating. Yeah. Keith Davies Definitely said old school. an MRE fruitcake. Oh, my God. How bad was that? <laughs> MRE. <laughs> you wow. fucking imagine? <laughs> Two-year-old two fruitcake. Powdered fruitcake. Just add water. How <laughs> <laughs> no, about not? Just starve <laughs> at that point. Yeah, I'll all leave right. my eye. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, all right, here we go. Who made Christmas illegal in England from 1647 Ooh. to 1660? Oh, that Never bastard! Again. What's his name? Who was the, who, was, who was leading England? William the William the something? If no, William uh, the schmuck. Wasn't Krampus? Krampus. Yeah. I was. Was that the reign of one, James? Oh. One of the Richards or William of Orange? Charles? Oliver Cromwell. I have no idea. Um, was it? Uh, um, not, not Beckett. Oh my gosh. Beckett. Who was Beckett all pals with during that time? Yeah, Cromwell. Where's sounds... Perry? Perry would know. Oh, this. would Cromwell have had Perry. Perry, Perry, would illegal? Perry would know this. Somebody said the Black Adder. I agree. <laughs> Classic. Monty Python right, singing. Oliver oh, Cromwell. Oh, somebody Oli. Holy shit. Oli to his friends. He does have a name that's. Hello, Oli. All right, so I don't think uh, George is going to call us back. So no, well, well, wait, well, should we wait go a ahead, little longer? Go, no, do it. No, do it. And then but we'll test him. I'll see if he, if he knows. I'm sure he knows. I right, guess it was 11. 11. 11. 11. 7, 7, 7, 12. 12. 12. Oh, one for each of the apostles. Of yeah, but if you take sense. one back, that would be 11. That's true. If the bad apostle. Cause, cause really, Judas I mean, doesn't get one. <laughs> one of those courses is the pungent fish in the can, oh, yeah. and you yeah. skip that. Yeah, Judas is a sir strumming. Can we take questions? We can take we're, questions. We're, we're winding down. No oh, yeah, more. We're, not done here. we're gonna have two weeks off, right? Judas no counts. Yeah, I know. Or, Steve, well, are we, I guess we're the most recording important, Wednesday right? night, right? Yes, we, we are, are recording yeah, like the last one. It's the, the it's the, the year, year end show. Year end wrap up. Get all your notes ready. Yeah, we need, I know, we need um, science or fiction stats, Jay. Did you get them? I have not received any science or fiction stats from anybody yet. Mm. You need to dig up the emails from a year ago from the people who sent them and, and hit them up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hopefully they Or didn't. somebody out there, some some somebody who wants to be mentioned as an honored fan. Bob Bob and I won't matter won't won't mind if they don't get mentioned this year. My yeah. prediction is that I did horribly this year. My my I, I've had better years, I, I I feel. I'm gonna come in probably just under fifty. Thing. Yeah, I don't care anymore. Um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Bob used to get so Poor pissed, Bob. man. I had a very good year of you deceiving Bob. <laughs> it, it was, was one successful. year. That, that, yeah, it was. Yep. Yeah. Um. So, if do, are, does anybody oh, have any questions? Let me uh, check the Discord, <laughs> of course. Oh, there are questions. Uh, quick question. The first one I saw for Steve. My family wants to take a trip to Italy from Connecticut. Did you go direct or with layovers? Took the direct. train. Direct. Oh, we went direct. Go direct. Uh, right the Rome. Question. New York to Rome. New York to Rome. There you go. Question: Not Rome, what is New York, but Rome, Italy. There is yeah. a Rome, New York. 
what was what was this? Oh, this was last week. But uh, what is the deal with dry needling? I was in an argument with somebody regarding acupuncture Bullshit. being pseudoscience. Okay. <laughs> There you go. Dry, dry needling. Needling. The joke is that dry needling is acupuncture where you're wearing gloves. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's the same. It's just the same. It's basically the same. But they're, they're trying to just make it. They're trying to remove some of the woo from it. Like there's no chi or anything. But it's still it's still just nonsense. There's like no Bullshit. no evidence to it. It's so stupid. Yeah. Hey, we're gonna base a, a healing practice on magical energy forces, chakras, and chi's. But now we're no longer going to do that. We're just going to like try to modernize just gonna the it. needle part. We're just going to do yeah. the needle part, which doesn't engage with any of the magic, and it's still supposed to work. It's even dumber. Dry needling is even dumber than <laughs> than real acupuncture. Uh, my aunt just had brain surgery in her cerebellum, uh, and she was, although not present, awake the same day. I had no idea. Whoops. Jump down the line. I know that you could be awake so soon after brain surgery. Has this always been the case? Or, what or awake your brain surgery. Yeah, you could be yeah. awake during brain surgery. Yeah. <laughs> Depending okay. on, because well, first of all, the brain doesn't have any pain sensors in it, right? The brain is numb. Yeah. Um, it thank goodness. Feels. And the cere this is the cerebellum, is not um, like the conscious part of your brain. That's your coordination part of the brain. It's, it's kind of like a separate brain, to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah. And um, and th th there's no reason why you wouldn't wake up right after the surgery, you know, no different than any other surgery yeah. in that way. So long as they put it back right. right? <laughs> well, what were they doing? What were they yeah, doing were they to the brain? Yeah. You know, no hacky sack. Doing a biopsy, removing a tumor or whatever. I don't yeah. know, whatever they were doing. There's no reason why you can't just wake right, right back up when they turn the anesthesia off. Uh... I don't know. That person was in Discord, so I don't know. They might respond. Let's see. Uh, another question. In a teacher training, we talked about having students put their head down on their desk to help calm down. Then the presenter shared that by resting their foreheads on the desk, students were also stimulating their prefrontal cortexes, which could also help them calm down. I'm assuming this is a total BS, but I want to know how much pressure actually needs to be applied to stimulate your brain and just how bad it is really for you. I can't imagine that that does anything. The physical that act. That's, that's dumb. You're not relaxing your frontal cortex by putting your head down on the this nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what, do, what do they think is happening? Yeah, well, yeah, it's like, cold, you're, you're, and I feel it <laughs> on my head. <laughs> Or just a, something pressing up against you, like makes no, there, you there, uh, we, yeah, I don't know. There, there are a lot of evolved mechanisms to keep your brain in a consistent environment. You know what mm. I mean? In terms of everything. And so, like, nothing simple like that is going to alter how your brain functions. Mm. Yeah. Right? That's cool. We got a couple of uh, questions from chat. Somebody was saying, what movies are you guys watching? Where did that go? Well, we're going to go see the Godzilla Before movie Christmas. because it's doing it. You know, the feedback on that thing is. is amazing. I hear good things from Lee. Yeah, question: yeah. What movies will the guys watch on Christmas? On Christmas Day, probably <laughs> nothing. Yeah, I think no, it's, it's kind of crazy Christmas Day to watch a movie. But what? Um, there's another movie coming out that we're going to be watching over the Christ that I'm going to be watching with my family and my daughters over the Christmas week. Uh, what one was that now? Some Barbie. big movie coming out. No. Oh, coming out. Uh... Um. The day after Christmas, we watch Star Wars. Is it a Christmas movie, or it's like? New Hope. I don't know. I don't know what we're going to watch this year, but I'm always down one for of New Hope. The, one of the Star Wars movies, or a New or Hope. TV shows, whatever. It could be anything Star Wars. Okay. Coming anything else? Out. Let's see. Uh, other questions? No, I didn't see any other questions in the Discord. Uh, Let's see if. There's like a de like a, a debunking the skeptics uh, video about UFO stuff, so that, that might be something we have oh. to we'll watch mm -hmm. more intently. No, we're, we're debunking this. We're all wrong. They're right. Yeah, basically. Yeah, they're, they're saying yeah about right. alien visitations. That that might be. Oh, okay. it's, they're just they're recycling all the old endlessly debunked stories. Yeah, and you know it's just there's nothing new. It's just all the same old nonsense. Things we've already trashed a hundred times. That's right. Just, they got just, nothing. Just they got bring the evidence. Not, bring good evidence for once. It's not, it, Bob, the evidence is there. We're just not looking at it correctly. Yeah. We're just not seeing it. Low, a lot of low grade bullshit evidence. Bob Squatch. All the cameras in the world. Not paid and $48 million because he he's pretty much <laughs> broke. And whatever money he has, he's hiding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So what, what's going to happen is probably something that happened recently with the Alex Jones thing is that they'll they'll resettle that amount to something that mm-hmm. will be plausible because that's what happened with Alex Jones that billion dollars or whatever that that got mm-hmm. that got uh, bargained away I think Jones now yeah. has to pay something short of a hundred million it's under a hundred million now eighty but he was he was also 80. shuffling money around and and doing Trying all these tricky. It, yeah. This tricksy bullshit, you know, it, it, sh- it shouldn't be allowed to do that. I mean, I don't know if he's make him pay as much money as they can get out of that. Company. Well, that's probably what they did. Is is where they yeah. got, and, and you know, over the course of whatever it's going to be, his next twenty years of financial viability, they figured they'll get eighty million out of him. Yeah, one third goes to the lawyers, yeah. and fifty million goes yeah. to the victims. That's the way that yeah. goes. Is it Good Burger Two? Good, not Good Burger. Good Burger Two. Is that the movie you're gonna see in 2020? <laughs> I'm looking. I, they clone Tyrone. Up, Last Sentinel. Up. Big Shark. Let me run upstairs really quick and ask my wife. She okay. Knows. I'll be right back. A spider wow. within. All right. Let's talk about Steve. Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah, All right. We will. Aquaman. Wow, that is a good Krampus mask. Oh, Willy Wonka. Willy Wonka's coming out. Oh, that new, that or just Wonka. Thing. Yeah, I don't think I'm, I'm going to see that. I'm not interested. Uh, yeah, I, I the, have to, people have to tell me it's so awesome. Bad. Oh my gosh, yeah. it was horrible. But this uh, is before he goes to the Dune planet, yeah, or is this pre, after pre oh, Dune? No, it was, <laughs> it's the same dude. It's, yeah. it's Charlemagne. Charlemagne. What is it? Timothy Charlemagne. Charlemagne the Charlemagne. God. Yeah, Charlemagne Ding Dong. Yeah. So I've been telling people on this live stream. Yes. To do Fitch. good, thing, to do to treat people well, do something good for somebody else. Yeah. Now do um, the <laughs> I encourage all of you during this holiday season to do something for the. The poor. movie is called mm-hmm. "The Boy and the Heron." I yeah, I um, heard about that. It's the new Miyazaki movie. Oh wow. yeah. Oh yes, yes. Yeah. Ah. No, that sounds interesting. Studio. Ghibli? I would see yeah. Ghibli. 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 Yeah, Miyazaki Ghibli. is crazy. That's gonna yeah, be yeah. some wild stuff i don't the, the preview though didn't didn't grab me as much as oh, I here's george grab. oh uh, ah george you're on the live stream uh, from an audible perspective <laughs> i was gonna say am i too late did i no nope. yeah we're about to jump off but the question sir yeah. is how many yes. courses are there in the ukrainian christmas dinner christmas eve i think right Twelve. one for each apostle he nailed exactly. the guy. Very good. Wow, he nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. it. Wow. Like, no, it's like in modern in modern times, it's a little it's a little fudgy. It's like you know you know we try to get like you have the water person? count, so the water the count, count. <laughs> <laughs> so, like do the candles. Yeah, they both do have two different candles. That counts, right? Yeah, but it's supposed to be twelve. One for each apostle, and you don't start there until the very first star appears. In the sky. You oh. sit there and watch the very first star. Usually Polaris, but not always. And uh, and then that's when you start. That's what represents the part of Polaris. What if it's cloudy? So thing we do, which is crazy, which we don't actually do it. You're supposed to do it though. There's this dessert. It's, it's like it's like a pudding, kind of a, a barley based dessert pudding, which is gross, but whatever. You know, when you have cholera, you, you take what you can. You you <laughs> take this pudding stuff, this kind of like ricey pudding, barley pudding, and you throw it at the ceiling. What? Okay. Yeah, you throw it at the ceiling. If it sticks to the ceiling, it's going to be a good year. You're going to have good luck next year. If it doesn't stick to the ceiling, you're going to have a crappy year, usually involving some kind of czar and Cossack raids. So this is definitely a party that you would not want to have at your house. Exactly, exactly. I'll say, I've never actually thrown it, but you're supposed to do that. And every year, everyone jokes, ha ha, throw it on the ceiling, ha ha, no one does. But you know, when they used to live in thatch houses and crap like that, you would yeah. throw, up on the ceiling, throw it up onto the ceiling. So yeah, lots of fun stuff. And no protein, by the way. No protein for the meal. 12 courses, the only protein is a fish. There's no protein. It's just a starch fiesta. Oh my God. Oh, I remember <laughs> wow. you saying that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, the, it's like great, but awful. Because the next day, <laughs> oh my God, now, I need meat. George, there, there's a science <laughs> question here. Okay. What if it's cloudy? Yeah, then you just, you're screwed. You just don't eat. You just wait till, <laughs> wait till the czar invades. No, it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, I guess there's a, there's a, what do you call it, an allowance or some kind of, yeah. Somebody calls it. I think somebody calls yeah. it, yeah. They just say, oh, there it is. And then the kids go, I saw it, yeah, okay. Potatoes. George, thank you so much. And have a George. 
I'm glad I caught the, the, the cutoff. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Just saying hi to everybody, too. So, yay. I'm waving here like a maniac. Merry Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. It's, it is just the, from Bethlehem, I'm allowed to say. It's the best time of year. So hope everyone is safe and healthy and happy and uh, love to everybody. We love you too, George. We'll see you soon, brother. Good seeing you, George. Bye-bye. Bye, bye. Bye, George. Bye. Be well. <laughs> I, I know we can go. <laughs> All right. That was great. Good. I'm glad we snuck him in. Stuck yeah. to the ceiling, huh? So That's I was saying, do, do something for poor people. There are people that cannot celebrate, can't have dinner, don't have anything to give to their family. Mm-hmm. And... Even if you just donate fifty dollars worth of food, you know, box of food, um, it's a big deal. You know, family literally could have a nice meal, and um, so just think about it. You know, it's a good thing to do. Here, here. All right. Well, uh, we sent out the second newsletter, so check your inboxes for that. Yep. You know, it's just some recap of the last week of stuff and content. But go ahead, Steve. Take it away. I was just going to say goodbye, everybody. <laughs> goodbye, yeah, so everybody. I, have, I went upstairs to get to ask my wife the question. I saw dinner ready. And I'm like, yes. Oh, yes. oh so that's it. Yeah. Manjamo, manjamo. manjamo. Your body Thank is you here. all, guys. Thank you all for Good. your support. See you next year. Thanks, everybody. Have a great year. Thanks, Thank you for Thank you supporting all. us this year. We'll see everybody in Thank the you to the patrons. Yeah. Thanks, as always. Thank of you to the mods. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. Goodbye, everyone. Ian, you're my angel. Hey, a few things about Ian. (laughs) Thank you. No. Okay, goodbye. (laughs) Skeptic's Guide to the Universe is produced by SGU Productions, dedicated to promoting science and critical thinking. For more information, visit us at theskepticsguide.org. Send your questions to info at theskepticsguide.org. And if you would like to support the show and all the work that we do, go to patreon.com slash skepticsguide and consider becoming a patron and becoming part of the SGU community. Our listeners and supporters are what make SGU possible. Doctor, here's my question. Will I be able to play the piano? <laughs> you Could you before? <laughs> Good, because I couldn't before. Oh, oh my God. God. That, was my, that was my surgeon checking. How did you do that? Joke. How did you? <laughs> that joke is impossible to, to get. I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> and they just laugh at you when you, when you start going there. So mm-hmm. I, got the, I got the nurse. I got the, the one of Hello, the nurse, like nurse. four nurses prepping me. And I said that to her. She, I don't know, 30 years old or something. And and my wife Jennifer was with me when I said when I said it, and and you know and I hit it with the with the punchline, and like nothing. <laughs> but oh, she Jennifer, no Jennifer's cracking up. I'm cracking up, and she's just like looking at us like, "Oh god, what was that?" Yeah, mm-hmm. millennials. Like, They're not trust them. in to like enjoy their life, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, come on, man. Say something. Oh god, it was the best part of the day. Was that, <laughs> that I was able to actually get someone to respond that cracked me up ev that was awesome (laughs) of course you like the master of dad jokes like you 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 land that fucking joke i mean how many chances am i going to get this like not many in in, in, in a proper setting right right? oh gosh so so my uh, here's another one this was uh oh had to be six seven years ago in which my wife had her gallbladder removed right Mm -hmm. so when it, it was post op, I think it was post op, and I met the surgeon or the doctor who's a gastro a gastrointestinal intestinal doctor, and his and his last name is Joe, mm-hmm. J O E. So I had to say, it's like, doctor, please tell me somebody has called you G I Joe before, oh. <laughs> and he said, nope. That was it. <laughs> Oh my gosh! But how could he? How could like? How could he have gone that long and nobody said GI Joe to him? I know. Hey, you know, he maybe on. he said no because he just didn't want to copy. Maybe, it. Yeah. maybe he's just right. He's like, you know, 
So please God his stop. Doc, you know, his doctor face on yeah, or right, whatever. Yeah. But oh come on. I've Stories. had it all. I've had I've had many surgeries and I've had doctors come in laughing and like happy and cool. And I've had like the total clinical, like, you know, no, yeah. nobody there, just like a robot. Can I, can I answer this one question? Because I know, Rebecca, you've been asking a couple of times. I've noticed it in the chat. It spiraled through. Wants to know about my experience with the arm totally asleep for a day after surgery. Um, Rebecca had it. It was so weird, she said. Okay, so uh, my experience with the arm after surgery. So, again, what they do is they put the numbing nerve agent in there to deaden the arm, basically. Um, and, yes, mine lasted about – I had the surgery, what, at 7.30 is when they roughly put the – agent in so it was 4 a.m it was 4 a.m the next morning because i woke up out of my sleep and by then pretty much it entirely wore off at that point oh okay and, and i was in i was in massive discomfort yeah from that i was yeah. like oh my gosh my arm feels like it was run over by a truck yeah so i popped more medicine and and went yeah. back to sleep for kind of the kind of the rest of the morning um, so it wasn't so much a gradual wearing off. It was, it was numb, 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 go to sleep 4am, wake up. I can feel everything now. So that was my experience. Keith Davies wants to know, did it take more medicine to knock you out because of your red head? Nature? Well, no, uh -huh. apparently not. Although I don't know that for sure, but I'll give you the, again, the list of medicines. They gave me several things. So it was the, um, uh, uh, midazolam was first mm -hmm. and it's neat because they give me the, the, the time. Yeah, which that was yep. seven thirty in the morning. Oh yeah, area anesthesia at seven forty eight. Pro, uh, propofol, and that was the one that you know knocked me out. Basically, as soon as they started putting that in, that's when everything turned out the lights for me. Then at seven fifteen, they gave me Decadron, which is another anesthesia. Then at the same time, fentanyl. I got fentanyl. I'm not hooked. I Yo, I hope. Uh, let's see, Ancef or Cephazaloin. Again, what? Uh, you know. <laughs> Two grams of that. Uh, then they hit me with that again. That all had those four, those three drugs happened like within the span of a minute or two. Mm -hmm. they, they put a whole cocktail into me at that point. At 9 10, they gave me more fentanyl. I was still under, apparently, at that point. 9 13, Zofran, which is an anesthesia. Yep. And that is it. That is the last on the list of drugs that I had. And then I wonder how long it took you to wake up when they stopped administering. I woke up at ten at ten oh five because I remember the clock on the wall and that was the first thing I yeah. saw was made note of the time. Yeah, I thought for some reason I thought that it pretty much you wake up like not too long after, but maybe it does take an hour. So from nine thirteen, yeah, so almost an hour from the time that they administered the so Fran. Well, Ev, I'm glad you're on this side of that, right? It's a big deal. Yeah. Um, you're you're you know you yeah. take really well. Well, I went to the dry needler first, and it didn't seem to work. Of course, so I went yeah. to the yeah. Could do that all night. <laughs> Could you imagine? Could um, you imagine? So, Eva, you in the middle of Hanukkah? Like, what's where are you in the celebrations? Hanukkah is on its uh, which night? Is it the last night of Hanukkah? What is tonight? Hanukkah. I lost track. Chanuka. To tell you the truth, uh, where are we? So, yeah, the 15th. Do, tonight's the last night. Yeah, tonight's. When the last do you night. get together with your family and have a, a holiday dinner? Yeah, we we do it around Christmas because that's the common time off for everybody. Yeah. So it's just, it's just easier. We can't really <clears throat> have uh, a get together for Hanukkah unless Hanukkah overlaps with Christmas, which it rarely does. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's Christmas because again, it's just that's how people. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Out. And uh, and you know Jennifer, you know Jennifer's my wife is not in her family. They're not Jewish, so you know there's plenty of Christmassy things going on, uh, emanating from that side of the family. So we'll hang out with them, and uh, for the most part, and you know do you know the usual kinds of stuff. Yeah, um, overeat. Yeah, overeat. Some, some play play games. We like playing games. Yeah, ga we do a lot of that. I so you know I have. Between my family and my sister-in-law's family, my wife's sister, and, um, we have four kids, and they're all basically like we have two kids around eight and two kids around ten, right? Mm -hmm. And I introduced them to Werewolf, the game. Oh! You know, and I got—I was surprised. I didn't know if they were going to get it. I didn't know if they were going to get into the role play, but that's how I taught it to them. You know that you got to role play it. It's not just you know you got to figure out a puzzle too, but it really is about you know alliances and you know whatever and my god did they love it we played oh, it like 20 times 
Good. That's that's like a precursor to LARPing almost. Totally. I know. Yeah. In yeah, a way. It was, so. it was really cool. So then at one point they 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 asked, can we run the game? And I'm like, yeah. Like I let them do it, you know, like go ahead, see if they do it. And they got it. They did a good job. Pretty, you know, it was funny. Neat. It was just really cool. It was a fun experience. Cool. Cool. I thought you'd appreciate that. I very much appreciate that, as you know. As you know, I was asked what games am I recommending this season? Uh, games recommending this season? Well, uh, I bought I bought myself a copy of Catan. Finally, something I didn't have yes. before. Ian, are you coming on camera? I see your uh, it's, video. Uh, box uh, hold on. Wait. Oh my wait gosh! For it. What wait is going on? It. Are we going to see Ian? No, it. you're not going to see. Wait Ian. a minute! Is this like a Christmas miracle? Oh, he's the box is gone. That was a tease. And uh, let's see, what else did I get? I bought a game. Where the heck is it? I haven't opened Terraforming Mars yet, so I think my my copy at least. Um, oh, I've played it before, so I think we're gonna break that out this year. Ev, have you ever played a game called Spartacus? No. All right. So Bob Wooster, <clears throat> our friend, and I think I think you might know Bob. Bob brought that over, and we played it, and it was one of the best board games I've played in a long time. Cool. It was really cool. We haven't um, reviewed it, all right. I'll make sure we get to that. Yeah, so you can't just go buy it. You have to buy it like on eBay because they don't make it anymore. Oh, interesting. Yeah, or Etsy or something like that. Right? And they do have an expansion or two expansions to it or whatever. But I played the base game and it was a ton of fun. It was such a cool game. Uh, so Rhett, you played Wingspan a few weeks ago and loved it. Yeah, Wingspan's great. And she has a new game. Uh, Elizabeth Hargrave is her name. She's the designer of Wingspan. She's made some other really great games. All her games are great. And her latest one is um oh gosh what the heck is the name of it but the theme is mushrooms it has to do with like you know collecting species of mushrooms and stuff and i'm sure it's going to be great i think it, i think it's out right now in like a prototype or some places are starting to review it my mycelium mycelium <laughs> is that the name of the game <laughs> what the hell are you doing here what yeah is that a is that a <clears throat> it's the christmas tr pickle tradition you guys don't do that oh and, and it's floating in beer well if i didn't know yeah so yeah. sparkling like, beer definitely in, in, a, in, a, in a mug of beer <laughs> oh god you're gonna you're gonna kill yeah. me i'm gonna laugh <laughs> That's and sad. then i will claim your powers <laughs> oh my god <laughs> that works <laughs> all right i gotta um, go eat yeah i'm gonna go i'm gonna go zero. too but uh jay let's thank everyone one more time for uh, i yeah because steve all like, just talks over me so um first and foremost everybody that that is a part of you know this this live stream that we've been doing now for years um you know we we really like to do it you know we have busy lives and it, you know when the pandemic was here it was easy to do it because we weren't going anywhere mm -hmm. but but we still are you know all pushing each other behind the scenes to try to be available to do it but we really appreciate it we like we consider this group of people like you know the, the people who appreciate what we do the most. So thank you so much, guys. It's so much fun to have you there while we're, while we're chatting. Um, I'd like to thank our patrons. Uh, you know, as you all know, pa the, the patronage that we get is a huge factor in being able to, to huge. keep us going. Um, I'd also like to thank all the mods. I very much appreciate the work that they do, um, you know, on Facebook and on discord and probably other places. Um, I would like to thank, uh, definitely thank Ian for a great year. We did a ton of uh, good work this year. You know, great we came stuff, up Ian. with the, the uh, TikTok videos and the, the, the Q and a YouTube videos that Steve and I are doing. And we snuck in a new thing this year, which is the email, uh, mm -hmm. you know, with, like true. newsletter, what, the right. newsletter not, a con, not a con was a rousing success. That was, a yeah. Good one. And that was a big one that, that to me was like, the highlight of my SGU SGU year was. We're going to talk about that coming up on the episode. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, those two days were really, really special to all of us, and it was it was crazy. It was crazy how much fun it was, and you know how appreciated it was, and it, everything turned out so good. So thank you all for anyone that attended that. Um, and I got to just say, <clears throat> I am very thankful to be mentally healthy right now. I had a horrible goddamn summer and early fall. Um, I went through the goddamn ringer. It was one of the worst times of my life. And over Thanksgiving, you know, we were all saying what we were thankful for. And I, I said to the table, I'm like, I'm really thankful for my mental health because, you know, being unstable and not feeling myself and, and not being in a good, happy, calm place, it was horrible. Mm -hmm. And it made me really, really appreciate and understand people who are having these problems. Um, bipolar. 
There's a lot of, a lot of things that people can be going through. Um, and you know, a lot of times people that are in those positions are, are people that are hard to get along with or whatever, you know, somebody at work that you don't like might be suffering from depression and that's why they're the way that they are. So just keep that in mind. You know, we need to be nice to people. We need to take care of each other. That is the whole point, in my opinion, of what life is about. Is here, here. Take care of each other. Here, here. Um, More that's why, that. Evan, I was, mm. you know, making sure you were okay and telling you whatever you need. Let me know. You know, I wanted you to know I was there I for you. I appreciate your regular checkups on me, Jay. Yeah, it man. really, really nice to hear from you during that time. Much so, appreciated. right. And it's important, right? It feels good when people show you that, you know, and I think we just need more of that in this world because things are scary as shit. You know, <laughs> it really is a strange It is world a scary world from. out there. Oh boy. And 2024 is going to be an interesting one. I have a feeling. There's going to be a lot of popcorn eating in 2024. Oh my gosh. Mm, it's going to be gonna wild. Some crazy shit. Be, but there's going to be great stuff as well going on. Um, yeah. You know, we got the eclipse coming up. You oh, know, that's going to be our, that, that, that whole weekend is going to be just fan freaking tastic ticket so. sales are going really good there's a lot of enthusiasm good. about those two shows you're looking good by the way ian thank you so much yeah thank you, you so need it you need like a thing to fit over your head that I'm does that that you're doing yeah. right now I'm glad. yeah you're a bit of a seedy character there oh, <laughs> yeah. All right. last you know, pun of the year that thank face you. reminds me remember those two, two what was it this it was like a sandwich commercial i like the moon remember those <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that was, the, yeah the things <laughs> It was a way some animal chin level. people, whatever they were. The, um, oh gosh. They called I forget what they called. That dates back. It's I mean, Quiznos. So, it's the yeah, Quiznos. Quiznos. That's 20, 30 years ago. Sponge ago, monkeys. Man. That's what yeah. it's called. Sponge monkeys. Oh my gosh. I like the moon. I like the moon. The moon is good. And thanks for everyone who still sticks around to the very end and knows that, you know, Jay That's and Ian our and I secret. have this secret. And and it's super cool that we're part of this Song secret. Monkey. George is in on it. George, yeah, George, George knows it. about it. Uh, I, does Brian know about it? I'm not sure. I don't sure. think we've ever had to tell Brian. No, I don't think it. I don't think we've had to tell Brian. I but think what we'll Bob do. Bob and Steve, not a clue. Ian, Evan, mm. in 2024, mm. let's have our first after show guest. Oh, that's a good idea. Oh, yeah. Just bring him on just for that. Yes. Let's yep. That's a good idea. We can Somebody do said Andrea knows too. I, yeah, I think I told Andrea. I did oh, tell Andrea. Oh, you told Didn't Andrea. Andrea yeah. come Maybe Andrea on will be our time? first guest. She yeah. may have come on. Yeah. Oh, we can line up guests for this. Yeah, we'll do it. Well, we fun. will try to make these post shows better than the real deal. That's Absolutely. true. Here, here. Yeah. Here, here. <laughs> we can run the quiz just here. <laughs> <laughs> the post show quiz. Here's the mm -hmm. real quiz. All right, everyone. All right. Good night, everybody. Happy holidays. Be well. Be See you bye, soon. Bye. bye. I, get the, I was going to hit the end button, but I found a new effect. So oh, oh my God. That's oh, even oh, good. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right. Enough. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye, Bye, Mr. Oh, Mellon. You before Jay dies. <laughs> Goodbye.